The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. In the year 2000, Ben Heckendorn built his first mod. We can rebuild it. Smaller. Better. Portable. Since then, he has continued his work, helping those in need with creative new projects. Got an idea you'd like to see built? Why not send it to the Ben Heck Show? Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. Today's build idea comes from Aaron Matthews, who writes: Hospital acquired infections are a huge problem. An example is going to the hospital for knee surgery, but then picking up pneumonia from the environment. The number one recommendation by the CDC is very simple: 100% hand hygiene compliance. Hospitals have gone as far as putting a gel dispenser next to each door at each patient's room, but doctors and nurses still sometimes forget. Why not add a motion detecting reminder into a touchless gel dispenser to see if we could improve hand hygiene compliance? We could even include a data logger to track behavior and analyze the compliance. That sounds like a great build idea. I'll get the parts together and start working on the device, and then later on in the episode, Aaron will come on as our special guest and help me configure it. So here is the hand sanitizer in question. So I think what we're going to want to do, once I read the instructions and figure out what's going on, is um, figure out a way to tap into this. We don't want to control this, but we do want to be able to sense when it's, you know, squirted the stuff out so we know when people have used it. All right, that's how that goes in and out. Hello, hello computer. Dr. Heckendorn here. Assassins, murderers. They take people and sew them up like garments. Well, it works. Now let's see how it works. Tell me your secrets. Okay, I don't necessarily think this is a motion sensor. I think it's an infrared pair. Uh, one of these appear to be black and the other one is clear, which probably means it's a LED transmitting. Yeah, mm -hmm, that's how it works. It's kind of like your TV remote and your TV and you're sending beams to it, right? Well, basically this detects if something's interrupting the beam. So that's how this knows that something's there. Our motion sensor is going to work a little differently, but we still need to find kind of a trigger point on here. We need to just basically get a signal that says, hey, I just did something. So according to my calculations, when I put my hand under this, we should see the volt spike. All right, so this switch tells the machine that it's completed a, a revolution of its uh, juice squirting fun and uh, it has a pull down circuit. So this pin right here goes to ground. So this one, as you can see right here on the multimeter, is still is high basically, it's got positive voltage. So what I'm thinking is we can use that as our sense. So when this thing activates, the multimeter should read zero. So let's just test out that theory. All right, yep. So that pulls that line down to zero. So we can use that to detect this. All right, so we're gonna to need to take three things off of this unit. Ground, positive voltage, and then the signal for rotation. I'm gonna retin these connections with some new solder. I'm gonna make a twisted pair. <laughs> Done. Ground and signal, and then ground and voltage. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just encapsulating this unit so we can close the hand sanitizer up and not have to open it again. here. Okay, so our switch is in place so we can close this back up. You can barely tell we were ever there. Once the hand sanitizer is kind of all set up and done, we can move on to the electronics portion of this project. Okay, we're going to test the motion sensors. The motion sensors are the little white things on the right hand side of the screen. And I have two of them so it can detect which way the subject is moving. And they're pretty simple, you just give it voltage and ground and then there's an output which will hook up to the microprocessor. Right now it's going into the multimeter. So when I walk in range of these, we should see a voltage spike. Oh, there it goes. I'm caught! I didn't do it, officer! I, I'm, I'm innocent! 
Here's a system we're going to use to analyze what the hand sanitizer is doing. Okay, we've got two motion sensors right here. And as we displayed, these work pretty simply. Basically, when they detect motion, you get positive voltage on the line. So it's hooked up to this, which is a parallax propeller development board. This one's made by the Gadget Gangster. That's kind of handy because it's got a little slot for the micro SD card. The micro SD card is where we will store our data logging and we'll also use it to play the audio clip, such as please wash your hands, okay? Over here, <clears throat> we have three items. We have an RTC, a real-time clock, which will get this, keep time. It's got a crystal on it and a battery backup. So even if the power to this fails, the time will be, will be kept. And it's an I squared C device. So basically you can access it with two wires. So we're, that's what we're gonna do in our thing. And finally, this isn't really gonna be part of the final product, but this is a serial debugger that I bought and then I wrote my own routines. So this will tell us what the machine is doing so we can debug it. We got the outputting, there's, uh, I have it in military time, so it's 544 and the seconds are counting and there's the date and, oh no, a power failure, we're doomed. Nope, because it's got a battery, so it's good. So how the data is organized is when you access the integrated circuit using the I squared seed bus, there are seven addresses you can read and you start at address zero and we just kind of read them into the computer. And that is done in this program. So basically, we sit here, we grab the data right here, the first six locations, and we put them into our time array. Then down here, we slice it apart. Many of the products and ideas you see built on this show come from the Element 14 community. With more than 500 top brands available worldwide, it's the perfect place to get everything you need to complete your electronics project. Whether it's for your professional needs or you're like me and have a passion for building things with your hands, go to the Element 14 community and click on store. As always, you can visit the Element 14 community to ask a question or get some advice or to suggest a build idea for us to do on the show. While you're on the community, make sure to check out how the Great Global Hackerspace Challenge and Ben Innes' Evolution of Electronics projects are progressing. Now, back to the show. Wow, it looks like you've got a screen for our pinball machine. Where'd you get this? Uh, I don't know, from the wilds of the internet. Ah. A place called eBay, so. They have a lot of these on eBay, which means it's a commodity item that you can easily find again. Commodity. And why would you want to find more of them then? Well, using a commodity item, you can make more pinballs with commodity items. So are you saying you're gonna make more pinball machines? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Okay, well I've made some progress with a pinball machine. Take a look over here. Um, for one thing, I've wired up everything into the main switch. So basically there is a uh, power strip in there which you turn on using the switch on the bottom and that sends power to the power supply here which is for the most of the components. There's a 50 volt for the solenoids. Uh, I've got my little debug thing here so we can read that. And this thing required some mods but I do have all three processors hooked up and working. CPU, audio, and then video. And I just got the commands communicating. This is, well, this is gonna be on the circuit board eventually, but this is the, uh, this is the commands going to the video processor, and here's the commands to the audio processor. So let me give you a demonstration. All right, so all it's going to do is um, give me points for hitting the flippers. Okay, so it sends over some data. It sends over the player number, the ball number, and the score, and the score can be up to well, it's a long, so it could be four billion something, but the most this display will fit is 999 million, so it basically sends it as four bytes. So there's a command on the computer, or I'm sorry, in the, in the code where it says, okay, send some bytes to the display. Say, okay, display, display the score, and here's the current score and the ball number. So this actually has its own variable for what the score is, but the main CPU just keeps updating it. So the, this processor and this processor are both pretty dumb. Basically, they just do things that this one tells them to do. But uh, yeah, so I can roll the ball around and get some BS points. Yes, that was worth 300,000. Hi, my name's Aaron Matthews. How are you? I hear your name is Aaron Matthews. <laughs> How are you? Welcome to Wisconsin and my shop. Well, let me uh, show you what we got so far for your hand sanitizer project. Great, Ben, thanks. 
Ugh. This is my solder room. Okay, so here's the box. And I actually just use a Radio Shack project box so I can, you know, be in touch with the common man. But then I use my CNC machine to drill holes in the back with uh -huh. a speaker. So this this has a motion sensors in the front of it, and it hooks up to the back of that hand sanitizer, right? Then I have a, propel, a Parallax Propeller Development Board here, which is their CPU, and it has an SD card slot. So I got you this little SD card adapter thing. So you put in the micro SD card here, uh -huh. which the iPad 2 is not going to have again. Mm. And then it bolts in here, and then this will do all your data logging and motion sensing, and then there's a clock, so it'll always remember the time. A clock, I know what that is. Yeah, it's a clock. And then here's a LM386 audio amplifier that will make speech come out the back, and then you can adjust the volume using this little potentiometer. So yeah, there's going to be a Robocop statue in Detroit, I hear. Super cool. You walk past it and it gives you 20 seconds to comply. Okay, so I went with giving this thing its own power supply cord. Okay. So it won't drain the batteries from the soap dispenser. Uh huh. But you just, basically you just plug in this thing and then it will detect. <laughs> All right. All right, hold that in place. Okay, we're going to need uh, 300 cc's of beer here. All right, so now we're going to make a hole so Aaron can program this. I waited until I could get a medical opinion before I drilled this hole. Okay, these dip switches here allow us to change parameters. Like, uh, you can turn the chime on and off, so there won't be a notification, or there will be, so you can see if compliance changes when people have a warning. This one is, it detects left to right or right to left motion, so if you're entering or leaving the room, depending on which side the scanner's on. And then you can also program the clock with it and set some things such as second reminder, like we'll remind people twice to wash their hands. So yeah, you can set that all with these dip switches without having to program it. Any motion creates an event log. Okay, so motion detection, we want to get the following things. We want to get the date, then we get the time mm -hmm. when it started, and then we... Directionality. Yeah, direction, so. Direction. So those are the three things we kind of load right at the beginning, but Boom. we don't log the data on the card yet because we don't want to leave the file open. Correct. In case of power loss or something. So we get these three things, and then we have the notification, which would occur immediately after. Mm -hmm. Notification. I'm not a very good speller. And then we wait, and then there's a possibility of a second notification. And then during this time, we see if the, if the hands get washed. Which gets logged as, and if that, that right. does occur, that's, Hooray, that's a compliant event. Right, so then on our data file, we, you know, the first thing, what it'll contain, it'll contain the date. Well, the date's the file name, so it'll start with the time, and then it'll say if it notified or not, because the system can be set to not notify. Notify, oh, I spelled that wrong. I spelled it like the sci-fi channel. <laughs> so it was like, okay, time, did we notify? And then did they wash their hands and how many times they washed their hands? So like, we'll just you know, put wash here. That's a W, apparently. Mm. So the thing you mentioned that I hadn't thought about is that multiple people wash their hands because of a single notification. So the reason I talk about defining an event is, you know, notification, second notification, then the hand washing, we could call those events in here. Right. So at what point do we say, okay, that's an entire event, close the books and download it and log it to the card? What if we did this? What if... Um, so the second notification really, I don't think that was is a programming parameter. That's just something it possibly does. Okay. But why don't we say this? Um, we'll have like a 20 second window. We'll say that's for all things. So notification and then it'll wait 20 seconds. And then if there's a hand washing within the 20 seconds, it resets the 20 seconds. So basically the end of the event will be 20 seconds after the last hand washing. So Aaron, you wanted to add some LEDs here that kind of show a status? I did, I did. I felt that um, if we were ever to consider um, uh, a purely visual reminder, say turn um, the auditory reminder off when patients were sleeping, right. um, we would want something that um, would work at night that uh, providers could use. And uh, I thought two colors. Um, uh, yeah, like blink red yes. while it's waiting. Perfect. And then once someone's done it, a solid blue. Turns around. We were going to make a giant green LED, but Radio Shack didn't have any big green LEDs. So we kind of used video game colors, you know, they always have that. Works for us. Uh, yeah, okay, so we'll just get this wired up and make a little extra plug to add onto the circuit board, and then we'll add the blinking lights to the programming. It should be easy. All right, so basically we're just going to get enough I.O. left that we're going to just add a header here for uh, 
for your lights. All right, I think uh, we've got this hooked up so we can now try it with the lights. Here's the code with the blinking red light. Okay, walk in front of it. All right, go ahead. Yes, I will. Yay! All right, now hold still. Now it's going to wait a certain amount of time. And then once it doesn't think anyone else is gonna wash their hands, it will log the data. All right, let's demonstrate the possible data logings we can get. Turn the system on. Okay, let's do some motion. Okay, data type one will be the person not washing their hands, being a bad person. Or at least, maybe they're busy, you know, there's um, a plague coming or something, so they don't have time to wash their hands, but they still should. So this is scenario one. We get the blinking red light. Like, please wash your hands. In a certain amount of time, it's just going to give up. All right, so it logged that data, which was a person not washing their hands. Let's try another one. Okay, it detected someone moving in that direction. Okay, so that time, the soap was dispensed. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> now it's going to wait again, and then it's going to log the data. Okay, and then the final thing that can happen is someone comes in, and they wash, his, they wash their hands. Once the hands are washed, the machine will wait to see if anyone else wants to wash their hands. So let's say they do. Okay. So we have some data here that we got off the card. So there's basically three different states you'll get. Um, it'll tell you which way the person was moving when it was, they were detected. Then it'll tell you whether or not the chime or the light uh, were engaged, which is a dip switch setting. So you can see how the chime or the light affects their behavior. Then it'll say no sanitization occurred within 30 seconds. Sanitization occurred at a certain time or sanitization occurred at a certain time and they were additional sanitizations, perhaps friends and family. So you know, we've got the data arranged in these columns so it'll appear fairly consistent throughout the, through, you know, throughout the month. And you'll basically have one text file per day with the time log continuing down. The beauty of this device is not that it's just, you know, as something that reminds a person as you're walking into a room, but it, that it's actually a research tool that we can use to um, see if and what uh, notifications do to affect compliance behavior. Hmm, I believe I will. Thank you for You're welcome. Mr. Heckendorn. I am pleased to report that your vasectomy was a rousing success. Oh, wait, this is in the dentist's office? That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we'll be answering viewer questions and also working on the pinball machine to get ready for pinball wars. We'll see you then. The Ben Heck Show is made possible by our sponsors at Element 14. For more information on all my projects and for a list of all the parts I use today, visit element14.com. We'll see you next time.